lockdown. We're talking about the nuclear agreement with Iran and the P5 plus one, the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council plus Germany. Let's put in perspective where we are with this June 30th deadline looming. Dr. Emmanuel Odelenghi is senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, tweets at EO. Well, I'll spell it out at the end, E. Otto Lenghi, but he joins us here. Dr. Otto Lenghi, welcome back. Thank you for being here on POTUS. Thank you so much. Good morning. Where is this right now in your sense? I mean, it, it just seems like we're at the final two weeks. Is this going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Well, uh, we are used to the drama from previous rounds of negotiations, and uh, the Iranians are extremely uh, talented at brinkmanship. So I expect that if anything comes uh, uh, to conclusion and to fruition, it will be at the very last minute with uh, with considerable drama. But it's true that there are still significant gaps uh, um, and important uh, differences between the two sides and some some issues that are more than just technical that need to be addressed. So, First you know, question, yeah. can it be extended again? Um, look, uh, the U.S. official position um, suggests that uh, no, there shouldn't be an extension. Maybe there can be an extension like we saw for the framework deal in uh, at the end of March of one or two days. But this is really it. Uh, on the other hand, again, uh, if past this prologue, we, we know that uh, every time we had uh, a, a deadline, uh, these negotiations eventually got extended. Uh, you know, the two sides can, can claim and quote progress as a reason why they should get uh, a few more weeks. So it's entirely possible that we will see another extension. So what are some of these technical issues that are, are really of major concern right now, at least for you? Well, the, there are two significant issues, which are you know, both technical but also very political. One is that uh, you know, part of the reason why there is an, an, an impasse on the nuclear program of Iran is because Iran... Uh, stands accused uh, with strong evidence uh, of having pursued uh, military dimension um, clandestine work uh, as part of its nuclear program. In other words, um, it has tried in the past to develop um, weaponization uh, and nuclear weapons. Now, uh, for over a decade, the International Atomic Energy Agency, the UN watchdog in charge of nuclear proliferation, has been trying to get answers from Iran about its past military um, activities uh, related to the nuclear program. Iran, so far, has not provided the answers. So unless we get clear answers from Iran on these issues, uh, uh, there is no way that an agreement can have an effective, reliable, trustworthy verification program. If we don't know what Iran did in the past, it is going to be very difficult in the future to ensure that Iran is fully compliant and its nuclear program is exclusively for peaceful uh, purposes. So that's a very, very big issue. And I doubt that in in the remaining 10, 12 days, um, negotiators uh, will get the answers and Iran will open up uh, all of its uh, sites. The second, the second aspect, of course, which is related, is inspections. How extensive the verification regime will it be? Can inspectors go everywhere at any time, or will there be restrictions? The Iranians want significant restrictions. Doc- and finally, is the sanctions, of course. Okay, Dr. Emanuel Otolenghi is with us. He is a senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. We're talking about this Iranian nuclear deal. There is some division in this country, but the president pretty much would like to see something happen. Obviously, he's been uh, sending his uh, surrogate. Secretary of State John Kerry has been very involved in this issue. Uh, and, and on the other side of the coin, on the other side of the negotiating table, clearly the U.S. is joined by the members of the Security Council in Germany, as I said. But on the other side is Iran. Is Iran unified? We have the leadership, the Ayatollah Khamenei, and we also have the president. But the people of Iran, for some reason, it seems, have been different in their approach. They, they, they are much more open to dealing with the U.S. and seemingly less hard line. And is there a difference in the dynamic in Iran versus the U.S.? I mean, people in this country, I think, would like to have peace with Iran but don't really trust Iran. How does it play in their country compared to this country? Well, you know, first of all, there is the regime and the divisions inside the regime over uh, how to deal with the U.S. and and how to solve the nuclear uh, issue are, um, you know, to a large extent, uh, just tactical. In other words, uh, you know, there is a consensus within the regime about 
retaining the nuclear program and keeping the capability, technical, industrial uh, capability, to build a nuclear weapon at some time in the future. The the differences are are you know whether you know how much you concede now in order to to keep this capability later, uh, and you know how much economic relief uh, can you get out of uh, out of this deal so they're tactical when it comes to the population you know the difference the important difference is that the united states is an open society a free country and a democracy iran is not so citizens in iran do not have access to full information they're uh, they're you know manipulated by state propaganda the amount of knowledge they have of the issues involved is limited, restricted, and filtered by by the regime. So even those who do want accommodation with the West, who want to be integrated in the world, um, still think that uh, you know the the West is trying to prevent Iran from developing its own peaceful nuclear technology and advancing and becoming you know a, a, an established uh, a modern economy. So they don't know why, because they're not being told by their government, because it is an authoritarian society, and that is the key difference. I want to get back to the sanctions, if I could, for a moment. Is it your sense that the U.S. could alone continue with sanctions, absent a partnership with the other members at the bargaining table? Uh, and is that something that would yield more results, do you think? The U.S. can uh, has, has been able, with its own uh, secondary sanctions, uh, to yield uh, considerable uh, uh, influence and have a chilling effect on the global economy uh, in its relations with Iran in the past. The problem with uh, you know, moving forward is that uh, when the U.S. was able to do so, it's partly because its main Western partners uh, went along and, and also supported an embargo and sanctions. So for example, you know, when, you, when you look at the oil embargo and the U.S. oil sanctions against Iran, they, they held mainly because the Europeans also stopped to buy Iranian oil and other key buyers uh, around the world uh, did not want to get uh, uh, into trouble uh, with the U.S. The, atm- the atmosphere after a deal will change dramatically. So the U.S. sanctions, even if they're implemented uh, unilaterally, will be less effective. The other risk, of course, is that once there is a deal, our European partners are going to say, look, you signed a deal. We, um, we no longer feel bound by our own sanctions, which have been removed because of the deal. And uh, we're not going to let uh, your extraterritorial uh, legislation uh, negatively affect our own economies and our own companies. So we risk finding ourselves in a trade war, and the result will be that U.S. sanctions, once they're unilateral and stand alone against Iran, will be uh, much less effective. We saw that in the 90s when US, the U.S. had unilateral sanctions against Iran, and the Europeans enacted legislation to countenance the impact of those sanctions. So we might be at that stage again, and that means a lot less leverage for the U.S. if Iran is caught cheating on the future deal. Finally, we have the House yesterday passing a resolution that urges Iran to release three Americans who were jailed there and also to get some information on a fourth missing American. There is also the issue of Iran dabbling in Iraq, the Iran also dealing with rebels in Yemen. And I wonder, can these negotiations continue in a vacuum or is it appropriate to attach these other issues, somewhat tangential issues, but it's issues nonetheless involving Iran and the U.S.? Could they, should they be attached to these negotiations? Well, I understand the logic of somewhat isolating the nuclear issue from, from the rest, but we should not forget the context that which you've just described. And so uh, as the U.S. and its European allies uh, um, finalize the deal, uh, we should not give up all of our uh, leverage, uh, mainly through the sanctions uh, uh, vis-a-vis Iran, because these issues are not going to go away. It's not as if the day after Iran signs a deal and gets uh, uh, its, uh, its uh, much-coveted sanctions relief, um, suddenly Iran will start behaving in a much more benign and constructive way in Syria, in Iraq, in Yemen, uh, or in the way it treats uh, its own citizens, or it relates uh, to you know, long-established international behavior vis-a-vis foreign citizens. So we will still have all of these issues uh, uh, with the Iranians, their support for terrorism, uh, their financing of insurgencies across the Middle East, their disruptive uh, and destructive role played in Syria's civil war, uh, in the support for Hamas and Hezbollah and so on. And 
uh, unless those measures and, and significant uh, economic leverage and political leverage is left in the hands of Western governments, chiefly the United States, uh, we are going to continue to see this destructive behavior by the re Iranian regime. Only will be an Iranian regime that has a lot more uh, financial clout to support its adventures abroad, uh, and an Iranian regime that will feel vindicated uh, uh, in, in its uh, uh, deplorable behavior and will continue to act with impunity as a result. Dr. Ottolenghi, I want to thank you for joining us on POTUS today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dr. Emmanuel Ottolenghi, who is a senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, June 30th. The deadline for the Iran nuclear deal, putting it in perspective, appreciate the context. And by the way, if you would like to remark to him, you can catch him on Twitter at E. Ottolenghi. That is E-O-T-T-O-L-E-N-G-H-I. G-H-I.